All right. So for students who are studying differential calculus, specifically the kind of calculus that the that you are studying about uh, taking derivatives or how to apply derivatives into your work, then we are now at that uh, concept uh, studying about uh, differentials. So this concept here about the differentials is uh, taught in many standard textbooks, is delivered in many standard textbooks out there on the market. However, uh, in this video lesson, allow me to uh, approach in my own style, in, in my own way, to explain the, 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 the understanding of the differentials. And so in my style of how I explain this, then eventually you're going to find out that usually I teach this material mostly uh, near the end of a, of a, of a quarter of an, of an academic term where you have uh, mostly completed all of your other skills in terms of uh, of uh, taking derivatives and all that, and, and you have had a, a, a good enough experience with der derivative. But even, even, set, uh, even as said, so you know, if you randomly run into this mm, video of mine for public viewers, uh, if you randomly ran into this, vi uh, this video lesson of mine, uh, you know, somewhere in, in the middle of your academic, academic uh, differential calculus term, right there, it doesn't violate any of, your, any of the order of your learning. Okay? And so, so now let's dive into it. All right, so now I have taught, I have had a different video lesson about uh, the, the idea of doing linear approximation. So highly recommend it. I, I highly recommend that uh, to go along with this video lesson, think as much as, I mean, think as closely as the idea of linear approximation that you have learned from my other video lesson. And that would be a huge plus like that. Okay, so now let me navigate to my other board and let's look at the, uh, let's begin with the understanding of the, the differentials. All right, so now at this point we are, I am going to just completely stay on the, the theoretical side of that. And so at, when we're looking at this, let's say the whole idea of taking derivative and, and the whole, let's look back at the whole idea of taking derivative, you have a graph. Okay, and your graph is, and, and forgive me if my marker is making a fade, faded drawing. Okay, so you have a graph that has, you have the graph of a function. So this is your function f of x, this has this graph. And so at any, at any instance, x value at any instant point. So at this point, hopefully anyone viewing this video is, is fluent with the idea that a lot of time I use the term instance. So at any particular instance where x equals a value, so let's say x equals uh, x of zero, or you can also say x equals a. So at ge any general value on the x-axis here, we pick t take that point and we land into a point right on the graph. Okay, so that x value on the x axis lands us into a point on the graph. And so from that graph there, we can draw a tangent line. Okay, so again, with the idea of, of uh, derivative that you have seen all over, then at any different various value of the x variable here, then you have a tangent line that's changing. And changing, I mean mostly changing in the slope value. Okay, so when you are right at this instance, then your tangent line is pointing up, positive slope, and about that much. Okay, and so, so now, and for short, let me just write that point right here, x of zero, instead of writing to, uh, to, to the, into much detail, x equals x of zero. But now from that point is, creating our tangent point right here, then at some other x value, at any, any other general x value, uh, you can you can put look at the a value as, at some other general x value to the right hand side of x of zero or some other x general x value to the left hand side of x of zero. It shouldn't matter. But so now, from x from some general other x value to this x of zero point right here, we make a distance here. And yes, in your learning at this point, we're well fluent that this is called the delta x distance. That's the delta x. This is the change in x value. I mean, so if we, if, we, if we fix our focus to this point x of zero or a, then at some other general value x, we make a distance, we make a difference. And that's called the delta x value, okay? And so algebraically, anyone at this point is well familiar that 
from this other x value being some delta x difference away from x sub zero, then if we directly substitute that value into your function f of x, then here we have, now look at my drawing here on the graph, and it's starting to get a little hard to see with, with, with when the picture gets a little narrow. Okay, so this height right here, this height from, from the x-axis up to where the graph, the curve of the graph is, that is the y value at this general, so this is y equals the function value, the height of this dotted line right here is the function value at that general x value. But now, specifically, I'm looking at uh, this distance right here, this distance, okay? So that distance right here. So just now I drew as a solid line, but only a short speed, a short piece right there, okay? And so now, let me erase this little part right here, but make some, okay? So that distance right here, this is the delta y, the changing y. Changing y from where? Changing y from, so this, this height right here was f of uh, x sub zero. And that is uh, some y sub zero, if you would like to call it that way. So this low y, and then there's the, the other y value at the corresponding some general x value. And so the difference here, we have created the delta y value. Okay, we have created the delta y value. However, here's another thing that now for calculus, so everything we have learned up to this point is nothing surprise for anyone that looking at this video because you have seen this idea back in your algebra course about you know, what delta x is and what delta y is. No one's, I mean, no one should be uh, shocked about this uh, when you're reviewing this. But now for, for students who already have had, for any students who already have had any uh, experience in taking calculus, I mean, in taking uh, the derivative and tangent line, so slope of tangent line, then here's the calculus part that we can, we're adding on top of this. So right at this general other x value, well, instead of landing on the curve itself right here, if we land right on the, if we land all the way to the, to the point on the tangent line, okay, to that point on the tangent line, so you can see that this, that same straight line, that same straight vertical line right here from the, from that other general x value away from x of zero. So from that point right here, if we draw a vertical line all the way up and hits with the tangent line. Now, where did this tangent line, again, as a reminder, this tangent line came from that, the, came from that tangent line at this tangent point. This tangent point was x of zero comma f of uh, x of zero, okay? In case you need to really nail that down. But so for this other general x value being some delta x difference, away from x of zero, then we're gonna go ahead and draw a straight line all the way vertically up, all the way that hits the tangent line, the, ten the tangent line that was shot out from this tangent point right here. So, so now at this point, let's compare. This distance where my two fingertips are pointing to, this distance between my two fingertips right now is f of x, okay? But this other higher distance right here, this other higher the vertical height right here is not f of x. This is, this is the whatever the tangency. So that's why I was saying think as closely as the idea of linear approximation that we have done earlier in my other video lesson. So, so if we treat this tangent line as a function t of x as a linear function, then this other point right here is uh, some tangent line function at this tangent point right here uh, evaluated at x. Okay, so. So now what matters is, think about, and you have seen this idea back in, in linear approximation again, that if we pick this delta x small, meaning if we try to move this x, this general x value closer to x sub zero, then, then there's not much difference between, because there's a little gap right there. There's a little gap between the height t, the capital T of x, and the height f of x. There's a gap depending on how far our general x value is, okay? And so, now back to what I was saying earlier in the, in the middle of saying earlier, if we move this x value, this other general x value a little closer to x sub zero, then this different, I mean, look at the, look at the picture itself right here. Later on, I will bring up an actual animated picture that, that demonstrates the idea a little better. 
But as we bring this x value closer, or as we reduce the delta x amount, the difference here between the general x and x of 0, then that difference here between t of x and f of x becomes smaller and smaller. OK? And so, and that was the idea that, 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 that drove into you know, developing the linear approximation as a technique. But here, we're not going into that route anymore. This is what we actually do right here. So back to what I was explaining earlier. This distance that was, the, that was notated by this double-headed arrow that, that came from, this, so basically right here in this picture, this distance right here between my two fingertips, that distance is delta y. It's the actual change in y value. Okay, It's something that we can see. So a lot of times to my face, to face two, and I call it, it's a, it's a noticeable, it's a noticeable or seeable delta y value. Okay? And then from the, my picture is going to start getting a little uh, too messy here. But from that point on the tangent line, actually, from that point on the tangent line, there is also a difference. Raise away some minus stuff right here. But from this height on the tangent line, and again, that height is created by the x value here. And then the same y value that was at x of 0. I'm going to draw this distance. Okay. So this distance here is obviously a little more than the delta y. All right, so that distance here, I am going to specifically talk a little further into that. Now, you can see that at this point, because in what I explained earlier, the whole height from the x-axis up to this tangent line point, where we substitute a general x value into the tangent uh, function, is different from the height of our function from the x-axis, where it's hitting to the the graph of the function itself. So that's why it makes sense that this distance right here between my two finger fingertips is different from the delta y value. OK? And so just look at the picture itself right here and, 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 and see the, 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 and understand there's a difference, always a difference between this drawn picture. And I didn't see, mention what that is yet. OK? And, uh, and, and, and so for now, I only remind you a few things that you all have already seen. The delta x here is indicating, indicating uh, how far from this general x value to that x of 0. And then from there, we consequently produce, a, produce this delta y, it's an actual change in y value. But then, so now for calculus students, we know that from this general x value, we can also substitute that all the way into the tangent line. And we have a slightly different uh, the height right here. And, but then we have a compare from that x of 0 then this point on the tangent line creates another difference like that. It is a difference. It's a difference at this general x value, the difference, the change in y value, but on the tangent line, on the tangent line from that tangent point. So now I'm slowly revealing more truth like that, but still in the end, I did not name officially what that distance is yet. Okay, have a close look, okay? Now I'm going to get back to my computer station and turn on the computer animation right there, the, the, the actual graphing with, with desmos.com right there, so that uh, you can have a better precise picture. All right, so here we go. So here's our curve. So on this curve right here, this is the point where it's created by, so x of 0 is right here. All right, so x of 0 is right at this foot right here where our point, our tangent point on the graph meets with the x-axis. OK, so I can go ahead and zoom it in a little more. All right, so just like that, just like in the illustration I've made on the, on the whiteboard, then right here is our tangent line. So right at this point, x of 0, uh, comma y sub 0, or x of 0, comma f of x of 0, then we have a tangent line that being tangential, tangential to this red graph right at that point, OK? And then, so now after putting up the tangent line, so now I'm going to put out that. See, so now this is where I'm calling that the other general x value right here. Let me really put that at some far distance, OK? So 
that's most is powerful enough to to do all of that demonstration. I can move uh, the, the 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 other x value. So x sub zero is here, and some other general x value is here, and I can even put that on the um, the, the real close to that uh, x sub zero. But right now, let's put it as some noticeable distance. So delta x is this distance right here. All right. So this segment right here, well, it's actually color in, in, in purple, but I'm not sure how much the, the computer resolution can, can show the actual color right here. But So it's a solid line right now. So this is delta x. okay? And so, so now let me show you the two other things. So this blue line right here was that delta y that we have that I have drawn on the board earlier, okay? And and now, from where x is, from where this general x value, we shoot up, a, we shoot a vertical distance up to the tangent line itself, and the tangent line again comes out from this tangent point. And so, from this, from where this x general x value, we shoot a vertical line that goes up vertically and hits the tangent line right at that point, and we create a a so this distance right here is that other is that other distance that I had on my board right there. Okay, and so and so now again one more time back on the computer. So now anyone can notice that you see right now there is a noticeable difference between this difference. So this is delta y, but this unknown mysterious this unnamed how's that this unnamed mysterious length right here. Right now there's a quite a noticeable di difference between the blue segment and this unknown uh, black segment right here. Okay, so this blue one is delta y, and this is some unnamed thing that I haven't mentioned that yet. But so now, let me do that e demonstration. Now I'm gonna move uh, my x axis, I mean, uh, my x value, that my general x value, uh, other than that x of zero here, as, as I move that closer. So that means, uh, think, of the, think of the action I'm doing right here. Then, as I'm moving that x, that general x value closer to the x of zero, then that means uh, my delta x infinitesimally getting infinitesimally small. Okay, right now on the picture because I have to draw that that illustration, I have to make it some bit noticeable delta x difference. But the idea now is that this x, this delta x value, is keep being pushed, keep being pushed and made smaller and made smaller. Okay, so this small is never convincing anyone. I, I'm talking about being, we keep pushing it small and so close, so close, and I used that term earlier. I made that, I tried, I'm trying to make this delta x quantity infinitesimally small. Okay, so, so just like that on my screen right here, I'm, I'm trying to get closer, and I'm trying to get closer. So from where this general x, I'm trying to get closer to my value. So now, as I was doing that, I hope viewers of mine and students of mine start noticing. So from, a, from some far distance, then there is a noticeable difference between the black unnamed segment right here and uh, the blue delta y. But now as I move my x value closer to x sub zero, and, that, and, and consequently it means, or at the same time it means uh, Delta x is getting smaller, smaller to the point of being infinitesimally small. See, and this is this is, you know, not that infinitesimally small yet because our eye can still see it. But you can already now notice that the blue and that unnamed black distance are getting about the same. They're both getting smaller in this con in, in this particular picture. But the the, the other way, the, the other thing I want you to see now is that the black and the and the blue here they are about getting to be equal. Okay, and now, now I'm gonna go ahead and zoom it in a little more. Put it in some more extreme zoom right there, and we're gonna our eyes can start noticing some some difference again, some little difference between the black and the blue. And now I'm gonna feel even more determined about pushing it real close, pushing pushing this x real close to x of zero. And now the blue and the black looks almost identically the same. Heights, okay, and again, this blue is the change in y, the delta y, okay, and what is this unnamed? I'm still keeping that mysterious, okay, and so now the idea is, the idea as you can see now is 
Yes, the blue and the black, they're all depending, they're all depending on the place where I put my ten, where I put my general x value aside from the, the general, uh, aside from this uh, arbitrary x of zero point here. And right now our eyes can still see, and I'm zooming it in even further, our eyes can still see the difference, some small difference, some small difference in our delta x right here. And I'm really talking about infinitesimal, infinitesimally. So, and at this point, even though I put in some good zoom already, I, we still cannot tell the diff difference between the blue and the black. And look at how close we, how, how better we get as we keep getting closer. Okay, so the blue and the, the blue and the black really are equal, really at this, the equal amount. Okay, and so it's, it, the computer can still make this distance uh, delta x right here not so infinitesimal, but we can, Ideally, keep getting it there, and we keep getting it there, and so now the, I can't really tell where the blue and the black the vertical little segments anymore are. Okay, and so now, what is this unnamed segment in black that I'm talking about? Okay, so recall that in my explanation that I've given earlier, the this general from where this general x value away from the from this destination uh, x of zero over here, then we shoot a, we substitute that into the tangent line function. So this is t of x right here as a function, and this is this red one right here is f of x. So this is the change in the y value again. It's also the change in the y value. I said this earlier as well. It's a change in y value from the original y sub zero, okay, from this y sub zero to the y value ob obtained at that general x value, okay, and so now. Here's the idea, so allow me to get back on my writing board right there. Okay, so now we're ready to push into that uh, theoretical understanding. And so, let's all go back to this delta x right here. So I've done that demonstration earlier and, and I keep repeating it myself to properly explain that core understanding that we can make or this delta x can be made closer and closer and closer and it keeps getting closer so that this distance here become infinitesimally small, okay? Infinitesimally small. So in that kind of small, when delta x become that kind of small, we now gonna, so I'm now gonna call this, I'm now gonna define this. I'm now gonna, instead of, call, instead of always, always seeing that as a noticeable delta x, now I'm gonna see that as a, I can, I can legally name this. I can legally, I mean, sorry for the typo, but I can, I mean, I can, I can name this as a dx right here, okay? So I let, importantly to understand, I let the delta x here equal to dx, okay? To kind of represent the idea that I can make this difference from noticeable to something that's infinitesimally small that's impossible to notice anymore, okay? That's no longer noticeable. Okay, to the point I see when the two when the difference between the two points on the x-axis becomes so small they, they become almost like or like one point. That's the idea. And that's why I can I can now legally define that delta x as dx right here. And now this this dx right here allowed me to grab a, a red marker and to name it this dx. And as I said, we we independently named it. Okay, we purposely named it. So this is called the differential. Okay. It's called the differential dx. All right. Or maybe I should erase it and rewrite it because I realize my writing is not so obvious to read, not so clear to read. So differential. Okay. So it's a differential dx. So differential dx truly is uh, the delta x, but the kind of delta x where it's not fixed. The delta x, the kind of delta x that can keep being made smaller and made smaller. That's the critical understanding of the, the, differential, the differential dx right here. Because the kind of delta x we used to know, the kind of delta x we knew, used to know from algebra and, and, and to represent change in x, it's still here. But those kind of understanding we've learned from algebra, it's once we've Looked at, once we have calculated a delta x, it's, it's fixed, it's a delta x. But now you guys, whoever learned from this video, 
or the calculus student ready on your way to, to, to accept and, and take the higher math. So you have to start taking the idea that even a delta x, a difference can keep being made smaller and smaller. And I keep making that demonstration earlier. And so in that way, delta x here is now regarded or purposely defined as the differential dx. And we give, give that a new expression, the dx. So d can also mean the difference, okay? Differential, okay? And so now, back on the picture. So everybody viewing this video, anyone viewing this video is so clear that this, this was that blue segment on the computer screen anim animation I made earlier. And we call this the delta y. But so, sad news. Delta y won't be simply equal to dx. I mean, delta y won't be, I mean, there won't be a dy. There won't be a dy that's simply just equal to delta y. That's the, the you know, one common mistake that, that calculus students keep making. Okay, but there will be a dy because, you know, I mean, in, in, if you're following closely with this video lesson right now, once I define a dx, you start thinking already. You already started thinking there should be a dy, shouldn't there? Yes, there should be a dy. But the dy, I got to make it clear, the dy is not this delta y. It will never be the delta y. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, this is the dy, that unnamed mysterious part that I've been hiding that name the whole time. This is the dy. Okay, so dy, as far as the name, the dy here is, yes, we call it, it's a differential. It's a differential dy, as far as name, that's how we call it, this, formally speaking. It's the differential dy, okay? Again, sad truth to happen. And you can see that clearly through the picture, dy is not delta y. dy is not delta y. Okay? But so now, what exactly is this dy? So the dy is the change in y value again. Well, d is, is good rule of thumb with difference. But what kind of difference here? It's the difference in y value from y sub 0 at the tension point to the y value on the tangent line here. That's the difference. That's the difference. And that's what dy is, OK? And so that this dy right here is indeed, this dy right here, OK, becomes, can become smaller or bigger depending on this dx, depending on this delta x value right here. So if, we have, if we're having a big delta x, then our dy get big in this picture. And then if the, this dx gets small, our dy also gets small, okay? Say if you move your, back in the picture of, I mean, back, think back on the, that computer animation I made earlier as I move this x value closer to here, then so my dy is only about this small, okay? So let's get back on the computer screen here. All right, so now, obviously speaking, this blue one right here is delta, why? But this black one, earlier, previously, it was unnamed, but now this is dy, okay? And so just like what I was saying when I was still on the, on the whiteboard, then you see that dy gets smaller, okay, it, ac according to the picture of this particular graph. And further, what you notice, dy and delta y, they will never be the same, but they get to the point that they're almost so equal right now, okay? I can put in some extreme zoom, and we can still notice some small difference. But in this way, but in this way, as I keep putting the general x closer, then, then so now dy and delta y are almost, almost indistinguishable in terms of the, the height right here. All right, but in the end, they will still never be the same. Okay, They're, they have different meaning and they, they, they're different. Uh, there will always be uh, some kind of difference. And so, this is my, what my point is. All right, so on my other board, now I have to mention this. So, I agree with what I said earlier. dy. We call that it's a differential dy, and, and you know what it is, okay? So in the way how it is, then if we're looking back at the picture, okay? 
So this dy right here, now if we set that ratio dy over this dx right here, and dx was the delta x, but at any instance, at anywhere where we put our general x away aside from that uh, x sub zero, then we have a, a dx or a delta x, but then the dy here is a change in intention line. And so if we really are putting, if we really are putting the dy over the x from that picture as a ratio, as a ratio, then what is this telling us? I mean, we can see that we can see that this is exactly the slope of the tangent line. But the slope of the tangent line, graphically in this picture over here, it's the derivative of the function f. That's why it's f prime here at that x value x of zero. Okay, so dy dx. As, a, as now as a ratio, dy over dx will equal to the, the tangent, the slope of the tangent value at that instance where x equals x sub zero. Okay, and so so now traditionally, I'm starting it out a little the opposite way, but because I was approaching it completely graphical. But so now in that way, in that understanding, this is how many many mathematicians define. So dx was defined simply just straight out from, from delta x. Okay, but really dy is defined. This is the definition. Okay, and I should have written a definition. So as a definition, dy, the differential dy is defined to be the derivative of the function at that instant x of zero, but multiply with the differential dx. And so from this definition right here, that's, that's the ultimate original. I don't want to violate that. Uh, this is the, ori the ultimate original definition of dy right here. That's many generations of mathematicians uh, define this. And then from that, we can make that connection. We made that connection earlier that, hey, now I can see that the differential dy, which is uh, f prime of at x of 0 multiplied with dx. But now if we divide that by the dx, then we de that means this entire Defined definitions will be divided by dx, and then of course this is defined as a definition. It's, I mean, as a multiplication according to the definition. And so we can cancel the dx away, and that's why I had earlier that dy over dx, the differential dy over the differential dx, will equal precisely the derivative value of the function at uh, x of zero. Okay, and so and so now we didn't get too far yet. We didn't get too far yet. So I have to erase this, even though I put it up on the board here not too long ago. But I have to erase it and because I want to leave the other board so that we can keep swinging back and, 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 and discover some more understanding. OK? So, so now, graphically speaking, in, right here in this picture, dy in, in this red ink right here is different with delta y. OK? But now you have seen that through my uh, graphical illustration on the graph on, on the on the decimals uh, graphing calculator then we have we will have the following understanding dy okay here's the the, the extreme the extreme the usefulness of, of dy okay dy will a lot of time be approximate be approximately equal to delta y dy will a lot of times be approximated to delta y. Or another way of saying that, you can also say that delta y itself is approximately, we always approximately equal to dy. So approximately, how good enough is approximately? And the, the reason I can say this now is because, remember earlier I, when I was putting that on the computer screen, dx can always be made smaller. Okay, So depending on how small the dx or delta x is, del you know, but delta x can always be made smaller and so small to the point that it's extremely small. And I, and I called it earlier, I used that term earlier, infinitesimally small. Okay, so when, when imagine when you push the general x value that close, you push this general x value that close, infinite, infinite, uh, tesimally small, would made a, a you know, when the x becomes infinite, tes tesimally small, or when you push that x, that's 
close, infinitesimally close uh, to x sub 0 here, then this delta y will be approximately equal to dy. OK? And so what is useful about this? Now, to be honest, I am not very convinced with a lot of examples being delivered in, in many textbooks about, uh, about uh, showing the, the, the beginning calculus students how to use this as a way to approximate delta y. Yes, it is, but I want my students to, to only take this idea, OK? And, 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 and right now, I don't expect too much about this, this relationship that delta y is approximately e equal to dy. Okay, and, and I won't give any direct direct example about the, this because uh, you any when any of you arrive later on at a at a course where it's a numerical analysis, then this is where you will intensively use that a lot. But the examples that that a lot of standard calculus textbooks offer at, at this level are, are 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 not will not show enough uh, usefulness of this, and so I want you to wait for this idea. In, into when into the day when you arrive at at the numerical analysis, where you know you have you have a much better feeling of how this you know this approximation will impact your 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 calculation, your computational purpose up there, okay? But now, what do I? I mean, so in the in the end, what is my purpose of showing you this? And so now, at this point, as far as the calculation, all you can keep in mind, all you can need to keep in mind here is that. The reason we use dy as a, as a close enough approximation and the reason we, we are addressing this is because a lot of time in, 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 computation, in, in computation, then it is hard. It's actually more challenge to find uh, the changing y, the delta y, the actual delta y. Surprisingly, it, it's more challenge because you have to be able to use your computational device to calculate the two separate y values, you see y sub zero and then y one supposedly, and then take the difference. Okay, whereas uh, it takes a lot less calculation steps, so that all you have to do is just find the derivative of this function that you, if you already recognized it, and so that's the idea back in linear approximation again. And then we just quickly we can once we've had the derivative, we can quickly calculate and easily calculate the derivative value or the slope of the tangent line value. And then from that, then allow me to recall the formula. Then we can, we can obtain we can obtain the dy value quickly by doing f prime of x sub 0 multiplied with d dx. Because dx is arbitrarily chosen. And so we can easily calculate this in a much less calculation steps, calculation, computational problem. Whereas doing this, we have to formally set up you know, y sub 0 and y1 and then subtract out. It takes a lot of time. You know, the plus, I haven't mentioned, we have to be able to evaluate the value successfully into the function. And so usually we use this value as a good enough approximate for delta y. So that's the usefulness. But like I said earlier, I am not going to give any uh, direct example about this kind of computational problem because I want to save that to the day that you really are doing uh, your actual numerical analysis course, when you arrive, then you will have a whole uh, limitless sky out there to explore. Okay? What I want to un you to understand now is that I just kind of showed it on the board earlier. If, and I hope uh, you, know, you already start paying some attention. But see, because so now usually a lot of time, when you're looking at dx, then dx is a lot of times, a lot of time, and usually infinitesimally small, so small to the point that the y is approximately close to delta y. Okay? And so in that way, and then and so that's why this can kind of interchangeably be understood that dy can also be understood interchangeably as d as delta y, even though they're not exactly the same. But then from that understanding, see I mentioned this earlier, dy was fundamentally defined as the, the derivative value f prime of x at x sub 0 multiplied with dx. But now these are, these, this is a quantity. It's a quantifiable expression. And it's an expression. And these two are connected. The f prime 
at zero and the dx here, these two are connected by a multiplication as, as the way how we define here. Then yes, I said earlier, and you have seen that earlier, we can divide both sides here. Actually earlier I went the other way around, but see, so now think about from this equation you can divide both sides. And so we ended up with a fraction dy over dx equals f prime at x sub zero. Okay, so my point I would like to point out here is that didn't I, and it's just like any other uh, calculus instructor, when we began our quarter in, in learning about derivative, I've been yelling out loud that we only treat this dy dx thing as a symbol, as a symbol to indicate, as a symbol to indicate, it's the derivative at a given x of, x of zero value. This is so throughout the whole time throughout all of those video lectures I've been delivering up to this point prior to viewing this video lesson, then dy dx has only been known as a symbol, as one package notation. And I, I, had, I also had other video that, that clarified that, hey, so the dx here means uh, the, the, is indicating that the, the x is the variable of the function and y is the, the, is the function, is the main function, this is the, the dependent variable and this is the independent variable. I've been mentioning all that. But in the end, I have only been asking any of my students and viewers to see this as a, as a one notation, as a one symbol to indicate this is the derivative. But now, aside from that, okay, I'm saying aside from that, or you can also think of this symbol now as a fraction, okay, because you see, because of this definition of the differential. So, Aside from being only a symbol, now this dy dx also means it's a fraction. It's a fraction of two differentials, the differential dy and the differential dx. I want you to start seeing this as a fraction. So, and, it, it, and once it's being now understand, now once it can also be understood as a fraction, then this differential and the fact that you can always multiply the dx to both sides because it comes back to it comes it will come back to the way how it how dy is ultimately defined, then this style of writing the two, the relationship between the two differentials will be extremely beneficial for you when you go on to your very next course, right after this course, the very next course that talks about uh, the integral calculus. And that's my intention. I just want you to keep in mind that from this point on, after you view this video, then the dy dx that you used to know only as a symbol now also has another symbol. It means that uh, this is the, the fraction, it's a fraction of, uh, of uh, the differential dy over the differential dx. And it will open up a, a whole new way of application where just right in the next the academic term maybe that, that when you're ending up with into an, an, an integral calculus course, which is always right after the differential calculus that you're taking right now, then you will start using that idea immediately, very intensively over there. And then and that's where I see that the, you know, the most direct application is there. We're waiting for you just right around the corner. Okay, and so a few other clarifications uh, about this line right here. So right here at this point, yes, dy dx is not only a symbol. It is also understood as a, a, uh, a fraction of the two differentials, the dy over the dx. Okay, so now I have to again erase the part I, I wrote here, even though I, I put it on not too long ago because I need to put in a few other clarifications. So now we clearly see what the dx means, what the dy means. Back in the picture here. Okay, so see on the picture here, that's dx. It, it came out from delta x, okay? And it's the part that it can be made small. It can be, can be made small, infinite testimony small, okay? And then dy was defined as, and as and you have seen that already. So, so now here's how in this picture, then in the way how I explained and now dx, well, we define that to equal delta x. So dx is uh, and should I say I'm I'm a little battling in my mind, or should I write it in red ink? But I, I think I should. So dx is an independent. Okay, because just out of nowhere, just right on that delta x, we call that as the dx. So dx here, as far as, because we now have two differentials, okay? 
that's the dx differential or the differential dx, and there is the differential dy. So the, between the two, the dx here is, an, is indeed an independent differential. independent differential, whereas dy is a, no, I have to say it, it's a dependent, it's a dependent differential. All right. I will keep repeating myself a few times here. All right, so dx is an independent differential, whereas dy is actually a dependent differential. So why is that? Because, see, so right now it's just in the way how we, we define our graph, in the, the way how we define our function, this bent curve right here, and that bent curve here was is really y equals f of x, okay? And so in the way in the way how I explained right here in the picture, then see the x is the x was chosen. That's the reason why the x was independent. So we just there's that delta x. And we just know that theory, that theoretical thing that the delta x just keep getting smaller and smaller and so small to the point that it became infinite, infinitesimally small. Okay? And so dx was chosen to equal delta x. And that's why dx among the two differentials, the dx differential or the differential dx here was a, an independent one. Whereas dy was defined. It was defined based on the amount of dx. So, Okay, recall from this definition, dy was defined. So here's the thing, think about the impact a little bit. Back on my picture, you see, there are actually two factors that, that determine our dy value, actually. If you put your x of zero point somewhere out here, then your slope is gonna be a lot steeper. Think about if you put your x of zero right here, okay? then your slope is a lot steeper. I mean, right here in this function, okay? And then from there, and then that's one factor. The dy is also determined by, also determined by how far your dx value is, how big or how small your dx value is. And so then in that way, that is the reason why, and one more time, let's, let's have it out, uh, let's have a look at the, the way how we, Saw that earlier on the graph right here, see? And, and let me put it in a smaller zoom right here, okay? And I already have fixed this point right there, okay? And, but depending on how far, how big our dx, so this is now dx, also known as uh, delta x, but now let's, for calculus, okay? Then let's call it the dx, but depending on where dx is, how, how far, how big dx is, and our, see, our delta y here becomes different value. So when I put it so small and so close, so d, when dx is so small, our delta y is so small, okay? And that's the whole reason, so that, that's the whole idea, that, uh, and that's the whole reason why I say that, uh, that my dy is a dependent differential. It's a differential, but it depends uh, on two Different the factor, the, there's, the, there's the value of f prime of x of zero because it, it depends on where you put your x of zero. And it also depends on how big your dx differential is or your, your, your dx expression is. Okay, so that's one thing I want you to keep in mind right here. But now let's dive in even further about this because now this is the part where it's, it's a lot of time I see my, when I, when I actually lead a course in, in integral calculus and I see my students who, who already got out from differential calculus, which is the one now, and, and advance to my, my class in, in, uh, in, in, in integral calculus. So I, I, a lot of time I see my students still, uh, I mean, uh, of course it, it wasn't the student in, in my own uh, the 
differential calculus before, but you know, say that a, a student came from else, elsewhere, from, from some uh, differential calculus elsewhere, and then arrive at my integral calculus, they usually have you know, still have this, uh, this understanding, this connection between dx, dy that, that uh, being a little bit loose right here. So let me mention that. Now, dx is an independent differential, and dy is a dependent differential, but that's not all what I want to share, you know, that I want to point out. The, the, the idea is as following. You see, so it's all because our function ultimately was defined as following. Y equal f of x. So I still remember I had a, 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 a different video lesson. I keep, I keep repeating myself out loud. In, in a, an equation setting like this, then y is the, deep, is the dependent variable, and x is the independent variable. And that's why back then, when we were still seeing the symbol as a d, uh, the, 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 the dy dx thingy as a symbol, then th this symbol has a meaning as well. It has a meaning that it's indicating, hey, in this symbol, x is the independent variable, and y is the, the, the dependent variable. Okay, And it's all due to the fact that, that our function is written that way. Okay, the function y as a, in this way how the function is defined and x is already known to be the independent variable and y is, is the dependent variable. And that's why in that way, I, and I should have written it a little further to the left. Okay, so x here is independent. Okay, and y here is dependent variable. Variable. And so back in the day where we still saw this, still saw this as they as only a symbol, then yes, that I, I explained earlier in that those earlier video lessons that it, this symbol also has a way that the, the D thingy that on top, that's on top, is associated with the dependent variable and the, the, the expression in the denominator is the associated with the, the one being independent. And so just like that, now with our understanding of the differentials then you see, so since x from our main function is being the independent variable, so dx as a differential now, as a differential now, is uh, independent. Independent, whereas dy is uh, dependent. Okay, so anyone viewing the video lesson up to this point is start wondering why do I keep emphasizing this? Why do I keep emphasizing and keep repeating to emphasize uh, the, 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 the independent and the dependent? Yeah, we already knew that uh, now dx is independent, dy is dependent. Here's the impact. There are other times, and you have also seen that throughout other, other video topics of mine in, in, in differential calculus. There could also be times where x is a function of T, all right. X is a function of T. So now clearly in the way how it speaks right now, then yes, DT is another differential. But DT here came out from the, deep, uh, the independent variable of our function. So DT is uh, the independent one. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay, and so this is chosen. And so how do we, so what's the, the dependent one in this setting? What's the dependent one in this setting? DX is actually the dependent one in this setting. And how do we calculate, how do we define dx? dx is f prime of t generally at any value t and multiply with the independent dt differential. That's my intention. And so there could also be times, there could also be other times where x is defined. Because we are so used to y as the dependence variable and x as the, the independence variable. But there were times that you've learned uh, throughout other examples and, and, and video lessons that x can also be a function g of y, for example. So in this case, highlight for yourself y is the, the independent. I almost starting to, wrote, to write a dependence, but y in this case is independent. Okay, And x in this particular role is the dependent one. Okay. So I want my calculus student to be more flexible than that. That's why I'm pointing out a, a few these different variations, so it all depends on how we wrote the beginning functional, functional relationship. 
So here, if we're in that situation, then yes, dy is indeed is uh, the, the independent one. Okay, and the dx in this case right here, now my board is getting a little small, it's getting a little narrow here, but dx in this case is the g prime of y and multiply with the delta y. Okay, and so in this case, dx here is our dependent one. Okay, and then you can have function u of v uh, of the var main variable v. You can have a function z in terms of the main variable s. Okay, and, and of course, need needless to say, it's something like this. Yes, the symbol for this is the dx dy. You see that there, but now it's also a fraction, means that the dependent variable uh, dx over the, the independent variable dy right like there. So each one of the differential is also a, a variable. Okay, and so that's all I would like to point out. I don't really have to point out any examples because, as I said earlier, any examples that, 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 that work with the differentials that's being delivered throughout standard uh, calculus textbooks are mostly about the computational one, but I want to save those. I want to save, I want my students to only take the idea that we use the dif differential dy's or whatever the, 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 the dependent one for to approximate the delta y. Okay, but uh, I'm gonna leave that for, for your professors at uh, numerical analysis to formally to show you how useful those are. But here I just only want to mention this in a, in a sense that from this point on, then the d over d, the dy over dx, or the, you know here is a d, d what the d, dx uh, over dt, right? All of these that we that were once uh, symbols now are also understood as uh, fractions, okay? Fraction or ratios of the differentials, differential of the 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 dependent differentials over the independent differential, always the dependent differentials over the independent differential. Yes, and maybe I should highlight that. Okay. So as far as a fraction, we always write the dependent, the dependent, whichever the dependent differential over the independent differential, okay? That's one rule of thumb like that. We're always gonna write it on that. And so, and then you're gonna, you're gonna take this idea right here, just know that from this point on, and you are, it's completely legal to think of a, a that those symbol dy dx or dx dy as a ratio of a, Differentials, okay, and then that understanding will help your integral calculus course to move on a lot more smoothly, okay.